What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Corey or Autobot, and I'm here today to bring you guys some more Black Ops 3. Today, guys, I'm going to be using the probably the best sniper rifle in Black Ops 3, in my opinion. I mean, I haven't used the DBSR, so I really have no idea how good the DBSR actually is. But from what I understand, from what I've used, the SVG is definitely by far, in my opinion, the best sniper rifle in Black Ops 3. Which sparks today's conversation for this video, and it is my top five list for the best sniper rifles in Call of Duty, and I'm not playing Rupture. To hell with that. So, you know, this is completely my opinion, guys, so if you guys have a different order or a different list, drop it down in the comments below, and I'll take a look at it, and I'll see what you guys think. But, you know, these, a little spoiler for this as well, this list does contain pre-patch weapons, which brings me into the number five spot as it is. The number five spot is the pre-patch DSR-50. Because before Vonderhaar was a asshole and decided that he was going to nerf the DSR, the DSR was absolutely insane. It was the god sniper rifle. It, it was. And, I mean, the only reason why I put it at number five is because after the patch, it got fucked. Which, I mean, the number five spot still belongs to it. Because, I mean, the fact that... The fact of the matter is, the gun had a lot of sway to it, and I mean, it wasn't that hard to use if you learned how to use it, which, once I learned how to use it, I loved the fucking gun. I loved it. So that's why I put it at my number five spot. But, you know, it it goes without saying that every sniper rifle has their, has their disadvantages, and the DSRs was the fact that it only had a five-shot clip, and with Extended Mag, it only had seven. So, I mean, you know, there was there was a few downsides to the, to the DSR, but... You know, it was still it was still an amazing gun all in all. So that's why it took my number five spot for this. Coming in at the number four spot, guys, I have the Barrett 50 cal. Now you might be wondering why is the 50 cal only at number four? Well, I could put it at number three, but there is a gun that's more suit more well suited for number three in my opinion. And you know, you might. You might agree with me on this one, you might not agree with me on this, but the 50 cal to me, the only reason why the 50 cal comes in at number 4 is because you have the ability to spam it, and I really don't like people that spam sniper rifles. That, For me, that's the biggest reason why the Barrett sits at number 4. If it wasn't for the ability that it, for the, if it wasn't for the reason that people could spam it, you know, this gun would be sitting at number 3, or even number 2. But the spamming is definitely uh, the biggest issue that I have with the gun, and that's why it only comes in at the number four spot. I mean, the gun itself is is all in all really, really good, and I like and I like everything about it. Like, I mean, I like the way it handles, and I like the way it, you know, I like the ADS, I like the damage, I like the consistency of the gun. I just don't like the fact that people see a semi-automatic sniper rifle and they think they can spam it. So you know, it it is a uh, it is a kick in the nuts. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, coming in at the number three spot is the M40A3 from Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare Remastered. Now, this gun was the gun that started it all, guys. This was the gun that, you know, this was the most popular sniper rifle in Call of Duty. You know, I could throw some World of War guns in here, too, but most of the, all the best sniper rifles, in my opinion, came from the modern era or futuristic era games. Now the M40 was really really consistent. The only downside to the gun was you had to get a headshot on someone using Juggernaut to get the one shot kill if they're using Jug. Otherwise the gun was fairly consistent. It was, you know, it's not a super slow bolt action rifle. You know, you do have the ability to hit multis with it. And, you know, it was, it was very very consistent in terms of accuracy and damage. So, I mean, it was a very consistent one-shot kill gun, as long as you had a consistent shot. So, basically, it was one of those guns that if you were good, it treated you good. That's the way I look at it with the M40. I mean, of course, I still get a lot of hit markers with it, but, you know, that's gonna happen. Shit like that will happen, because it isn't, you know, it isn't a 50 cal, it isn't the SVG here, and, you know, shit like that is gonna happen. Coming in at the number two spot is the sniper rifle that I am using right now, the SVG. Now... You might be wondering, why is it coming in at number two? Like, why isn't the Locust there? The Locust is better than the SVG. What are you thinking, you dumbass? Well, 
my reasoning is the SVG versus the Locust. The SVG is more consistent. Like the ADS, you can drag scope. There is a little bit of aim assist with it, which for this game is a huge help. And I mean, it might not shoot as fast as the Locust, but the like I said, the ADS is more consistent. There's a little bit of aim assist, so I mean, I'd much rather you know, I'd much rather be consistent one shot kill. Because I mean, the Locust is fairly consistent, but it's not as consistent as it could be. That's for sure. The SVG I find is just more consistent with Locus in every way possible. The only downside that the lo that the only advantage that the Locus has over the SVG is the one is the uh, firing. I mean, the one shot kill for an SVG is pretty much anywhere on the body, unless you shoot them like in the bottom of the fucking foot. Or you know, with the lo whereas with the Locus you have to shoot them in the chest and up, and sometimes you get away with a stomach or an upper like an upper stomach shot. So you know, like it is a. Uh, yeah, the Locust isn't as big of a one-shot kill weapon as the SVG is, but you know, I find the SVG is a lot is a lot better in terms of the ADS and the consistency. So that's where the SVG comes in at number two. Now, this one, guys, is a really big one for me. This one was a tough choice. There was a lot of guns that would fit really well in the number one spot, but I think I speak for everyone, and I think everyone will agree with me on this one. And I just, I don't know why my guy didn't, gra didn't grab the ledge, but anyway. You know, this this gun is a popular gun in Modern Warfare 2. And it is also made a return in Infinite Warfare. In Infinite Warfare, it's not as good, but I'm going with the Modern Warfare 2 version because of how good this gun actually was. And that is the Intervention. That gun, it didn't matter who you shot. You know, as long as they weren't using Painkiller, they were dead. You, threat, you slap FMJ on it, you can shoot. Just, you could kill... Anyone from just about anywhere. You know, you can shoot through just about anything with this gun with FMJ on. And the ADS is really consistent. The fire rate for a bolt action was insanely good. Oh, I choked it. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, no quad. No quad. Oh, well. Not a, not, not a big issue. But, um, you know, the intervention was definitely a... Was definitely an awesome gun. I mean... In terms of sniping, it was insanely good. There were some crazy fucking clips hit with that thing, just because of the fact that it was a one. It was almost always a one-shot kill. You slap, ex you slap extended mag on it. You got like a a ten-shot or not? Yeah, it's like, I think it was a ten-shot mag. You slap extended mag on it. You got a ten-shot mag and a sniper that's bolt action. It's a one-shot kill pretty much all the time. And you know, you didn't really need FMJ to hit collapse with this thing. I mean, I I remember. Playing, you know, playing a high rise with some buddies when Modern Warfare 2 was the newer game, like shortly after I got my Xbox 360 and hitting countless collats and triple collats off the spawn on high rise without FMJ. Like hitting hitting it with like thermal and hitting it like it was just all all around. The intervention was an insanely awesome gun. And it's definitely a fan favorite from snipers in the Call of Duty franchise. Because I'm gonna say it right now, when I found out that that thing was in Infinite Warfare, I was so fucking happy. But, I was a little disappointed with, with it in Infinite Warfare, not gonna lie. It's not as consistent as the MW2 intervention, but you know, it still, it still fits what the uh, intervention's supposed to do. It's got a pretty good fire rate and stuff like that, but the Model for 2 intervention is definitely, uh, definitely my favorite. It's, it's definitely the number one sniper in my mind for Call of Duty. And, I mean, I... I would, you know, I would do some War to War snipers, but the only one in that list that I really, really like is the PTRS. But it still doesn't compare to uh, the post patch or the pre patch GSR 50. So, you know, honorable mention would be the PTRS and the Car 98, as well as the Logos. Those would be my three honorable mentions. But anyway, guys, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like. And if you guys want more top five lists whether it be top five, my top five call of duty games my top five maps or whatever it might be let me know i'll gladly do them but anyway if you guys are new to this channel be sure to subscribe and be sure to click the little bell icon so you guys don't miss a video or a live stream from me and yeah it's been your boy cory or autobot and i'm out peace